You want satisfaction, don't you? Think about it. Almost everything you do, eating, sex, buying that new car, or being the best bowler on the team, you're seeking satisfaction to feel good about yourself. Of course, you think you know exactly how to get satisfied. Get more stuff, right? Wrong. Okay, fess up. Could you admit that very little you've attained brought the satisfaction you imagined it would? Here's the reason. Satisfaction rarely comes to those who have everything they want. It comes to those who have learned to be content with what they have. Don't you hate that? History has proven that things and power don't bring lasting satisfaction. Why is that? Because that quest is never ending. You never have enough. And consider this, as you strive for more, you place yourself in direct competition with others who are trying to do the same thing you are. Now that's where a lot of stress, confrontation, and altercations are created. Only God can teach you how to be at peace with yourself and with others and with the things he's given you. Ever hear of the new commandment? He hasn't changed it that I know of. It's all about loving each other. That is God's will. And becoming at peace with your life, what you have and the people he's put into your life, that is God's purpose for you. Violence is a result of wanting and then going after what someone else has. Peace is the result of pursuing things that support and enhance the lives of others. Peace is the result of being a disciple of Christ. That's why they call him the Prince of Peace. Hello, do you want peace or do you prefer to continue fighting the rest of your life? That's really what this all boils down to. It's your choice, peace or fighting. You can follow the fighting fools over a cliff or you can follow Jesus and find peace. It's your choice. I'm going to assume now that you've chosen peace. So how are you going to get there? Good place to start, the book Habergeon. This is not a religious book. Oh yeah, it's full of Bible scripture and teachings, but it has very little to do with churches, ceremony, or doctrinal beliefs. It's about life. It's about the way you approach life, the decisions you make, and the way you respond to life's hardships and problems. This is not a think positive and feel good book if you've been turned off by religion, or if you tried to walk a peaceful Christian life but have failed, this book is for you. Come on, admit it. You've talked about hypocritical Christians and you don't want to be one. Well, here's your chance to be different. Warning, you might have to unlearn a few things. The old ways will continue trying to convince you that life is all about competing with others and getting their power and their stuff. God's not against having stuff, is he? No, but his priorities are not power and possessions. His priorities are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, stuff and power. It's not in there. Taking on God's nature will benefit your life on earth and it'll go with you into eternal life. Try taking your new car with you next time you go to heaven. The Bible proclaims that if you practice these things, you will never stumble, and the gate into eternity will be open wide to receive you. Please, get out of your rut. Get the book Habergeon, read it, follow Jesus, and find your peace and be free at last.